what is up everybody this is uh the morning after right we should call this the the morning after segment because i think we're probably all fired up right now everybody wants to fire everybody everybody wants to get rid of everybody everybody wants doug p gone carson wentz is bad how it listen man week one week one people week one but there is a lot to digest there really is a lot to digest a lot of disappointment as well for everybody tuning in again tony cotillo uh sloppy listen yeah sloppy is right mike let's let's get right to it man i mean seriously uh everybody tuning in tony cotillo at t cotillo 23 uh, Heat Ratio Sports, Fox Sports, The Gambler, PhillyInfluencer.com. Uh, listen, let, let's let us let us get. Is it is it? It's only week one. Is that what we look at? Is it only week one? Do are are we are we really concerned? I know I'm concerned. I'm not I'm not ready to throw the towel in like some people, but you know I I definitely definitely am concerned, especially when we look at the the offensive line play, which was really bad, which I don't know if you could attribute that to injury, if you could get, it can attribute that to, you know, people trying to gel, uh, just not ready to do it. Uh, there, there, there's a lot of different things I think we have to look at from an offensive standpoint. The Deshaun Jackson thing is very strange to me. Uh, he was on the field for only 54% of the snaps. Uh, they, you know, they did show him on the sideline stretching out a little bit. You know, I, I, I don't, Listen, I don't know what's going on. It seems like people aren't on the same page. Zach Ertz had a had a terrible drop in a in a really important situation, you know, on, on a third down play, on a fourth down play. I, I listen, I, these kind of things can't happen. Uh, Mike checking it. Mike, you're you're right. Poor play call, and lack of adjustment to the personnel we had. You know, the announcer he he had a really good point, and he said during the game. Sometimes, you know, you may be able to have all the speed in the world, but if you don't know how to utilize it, and you don't know how to put it, put them in the right positions to make plays and not, you know, not to sound cliche or Andy Reid like, but what's the point? What's the point having it? And, and, you know, we had a lot of speed yesterday. You, you, you've seen that in Jalen Rager, right? 55 yard bomb. It looked really good. I, it was underthrown a little bit. Uh, but he still made a good adjustment on it. I think if Carson got it out a little bit more, it would have been a touchdown. Listen, you know, this is what I keep saying about Doug Peterson. He comes up small sometimes, and this isn't the old NFC East, right? This this is not the old NFC East. This is two guys on the other sideline over there, <clears throat> excuse me, in Jack Del Rio and Ron Rivera that have been around. You know, Jack Del Rio is a defensive coordinator for Washington, and I've said this before, and, and a lot of other people said this again. Washington is very underrated when we talk about a defensive line. It, their defensive front is very underrated, very, very good. They only got even better with Chase Young. It's amazing uh, what they can do and the, the havoc that they can wreak, you know, on that line. And Jack Del Rio adjusted. They they adjusted. Listen, the Eagles went up seventeen, right? They adjusted. They adjusted the way that. They knew how to adjust, and on the other sideline was Doug Peterson, who did not adjust. And some of his press conference clippings were a little concerning to me. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. You know, that was Frank Reich's Super Bowl. You can say what you want. That was not Doug Peterson's Super Bowl. I like Doug. I think he's a good coach, but I think now he will start to get exposed, and this is the problem. And we have to talk about Carson. We have to talk about Carson. Uh, two more fumbles for the league leader in fumbles. I, exactly. Listen, the Car Carson Wentz really needs to get, get get over whatever he's going through, man. I'm telling you, I between holding the ball on too long by by making bad reads, I, I I'm not sure why Carson Wentz looked the way he did yesterday, and he, it, it's concerning to me. It is because. You know, we have a franchise quarterback that we need to lead. And and I get that he was running for his life. And, and, and I, I'm going to give Carson a solid and say, you know what? Let me look at this team once we get Lane Johnson back. Let me look at this team once we have Miles Sanders in the back. And also, when you look at this, who do you put this on? Do you put this on Howie, not supplying enough talent? Do you put this on Doug, not using the talent properly? Or do you put it on a talent, not utilizing their skills to the best of their ability? There, there's a lot of blame to go around here. There really is. You cannot go to Washington and lose in the first week against a quarterback in Dwayne Haskins, 
right? Who we all know has has his tendencies not to be a very good quarterback, right? You, you, I understand Ron Rivera is a really good coach, but you got to come up a little bigger than this. If if we would have lost this game 24-21 and, you know, we, we were fighting tooth and nail, that's fine. But but, but it, 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 it can't happen. It just can't happen. There, uh, Mike checks there's a lot of teams who are really better lines who don't fumble all the time. Uh, true. I, I'll give you that. It's our O-line. Jimmy V, what's up, buddy? Thanks for checking in. Needs work. I, I'll be I'll be honest with you. Our O line absolutely needs work, but that is uh, you know, that is a, a product of of a bad draft. That is a product of a bad scouting department. Right? We don't have the depth on the O line that we used to have. And for all you people, all the Jason Peters guys, Jason Peters played pretty well yesterday. You say what you want, but Jason Peters did not play bad at all. Jack Driscoll goes to the sideline. You get Jordan Maialata, who's not ready to play. The guard play was lackluster at best. And Jason Kelsey did not have a good game at the center position. I mean, they were getting bull rushed all day long. They really were. They were getting stunts thrown at them. You know, their 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 cadence was off. You could tell. But that call, you know, here's the thing. That falls on the head coach. You, you you have to come into week one and be prepared, man. You have to come into week one and be prepared. Preparation is the key to all success. Preparation is the key to victory. So if you don't have the preparation, I understand. Listen, I understand it was an abbreviated offseason. I get it. But guess what? All the other teams in the NFL had the same abbreviated offseason. All the other teams in the NFL had rookies to come in and play. All the other teams in the NFL had O linemen to come in and play. They they all had the same problems we had. But for some reason, 90% of them were able to overcome that abbreviated offseason and they were able to produce. Win or lose, they still were able to produce. And this is a problem to me. This continues to be a problem. This was a worse loss than people think. Now, I'm not ready to jump ship, right? I'm not ready to jump ship. What's up, John? Thanks for checking in, buddy. I'm not ready to jump ship at all. I'm not. I'm not ready to say season's over. Let's trade Carson Wentz. I'm not. Listen, I am not putting this on Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz did not have a good game. Yes, he did not. But the coaching staff needs to take ownership of what happened. Okay? They need to take ownership. The front office needs to take ownership of not having talent at the depth position. They have to do it. That John, you're right. Bad loss. Absolutely. Terrible. Not just bad. Terrible. Week one against an NFC East opponent in the Washington Redskins, a team that is rebuilding, right? A team that is rebuilding. Listen, it's a terrible loss. Terrible loss, especially especially when especially when you were up by 17. I mean, come on. Brian checking in, blaming is in order. Howie, Peterson, and Wentz. T- right. Right. That this is listen, Brian has the perfect point. I've been saying this. I said this at the draft, and I've been saying this up to this point. Take a backup quarterback in round two. Listen, you can't take a backup quarterback in round two when you have no offensive line depth, when you have no linebacker depth. When like you can't do that. When you have receivers who can't get open. JJ Ortega Whiteside, you might just cut him now. He did absolutely nothing again. Again, no adjusting his own Peterson. Peterson came up small. Peters, listen, if that is Jay Gruden, guess what? Peterson doesn't get out coached. He got out coached by Ron Rivera. That's what he did. And guess what? So did our boy Jim Schwartz. He got out coached by Ron Rivera. And Dak, Jack Del Rio outcoached Doug Peterson. He had an answer for everything they were doing on offense. Everything. That two tight end set that came to the, that 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 was going down the field at will. Dallas Goddard, Zach Ertz. Guess what? How quick did they take that out? How quick? Instantly. Jack Del Rio is a mastermind. Doug Peterson is not coaching against stiffs anymore. He's coaching against guys like Mike McCarthy. He's coaching against guys like Ron Rivera, like Jack Del Rio, like Joe Judge that's coming from a New England pedigree. He's he's coaching against very good talent. And if he's not telling himself, we're going to have a problem. Uh, Last point with Brian says, holding the ball too long, not throwing away, taking sacks is on Wentz. I, I listen. I don't know what's going on with Carson. I don't. I don't understand. I. I. I, I don't. I, I. can't. I. You know. It's. It's. 
it's mind boggling to me. I, you know, no matter how much you work with the guy, you know, he is, listen, it, it's two things. You have to call the right plays, obviously, but you also also have to execute the plays, and you also have to know when to execute the out of bounds play, when to execute the the dead ball play, right? And that's something that Carson does not do. That's something that Carson he is holding on to the ball way too long again. Now, is that because he doesn't have the guy to get open? Is that because he's looking around and nobody else is open on the field? I'm not sure. I don't know what it is, but it's been going on for the last three years. It's something that has to it has to stop. They're taking the sacks. Listen, I you know, you cannot you have to feel the pressure. This is the one thing I've been saying about Carson Wentz. I love his ability, I love his play. The one thing he doesn't do well at all, he does not sense pressure. He doesn't sense the blind side pressure. He doesn't sense the rush. And that's something it's not taught. And that, that's what I'm trying to explain to people. This is not you don't go in a film room and, and, and understand how to sense pressure. You don't go in a field and understand that is something that uh, you know I've coached sports for many years and always said that there's an IQ level that comes with there's a natural ability that comes with every position, and that's a natural instinct. That's something that's not learned. That's something that you have or you don't, and that's something Carson doesn't. Carson does not have it, and he needs to get it. In some form, will it ever be 100% complete? No, but he needs to understand how to get rid of the ball, man. It, it's killing me. Lost the team, ready to pack it in. You score one more. Right. Put foot on the pedal, right? And and here's the thing. I don't think he took the foot off the gas. I just think Dak, Dak, Jack Del Rio punked him. I do. I think Jack Del Rio punked Doug Peterson. He said, okay, man, I got, I got one for you here. Stop this. And Doug couldn't do it. That, you know, again, Doug could do it. Got to have an unbiased, listen, unbiased conversation about Doug. Back to back with continuous questions. John, absolutely. Uh, you know, J Doug Peterson, just because he won us a ring, will be forever grateful for Doug Peterson for winning a Super Bowl in this town. But I don't understand when I listen to it. Listen, his press conferences, some of his press conferences that he said, some of the, the, the sticking points of his press yesterday, were a little concerning to me. I don't know if anybody heard it, but we heard him say, I'm really not sure what's being called, run or pass. We just roll with it after the ball is snapped. What the hell kind of comment is that? I don't even know what kind of context he was in or what he was going for, but that's one of the most idiotic statements I've ever heard. I don't understand. I you know I don't understand. It, it, it's it's a big time problem. Going for it on fourth costs us the game. I'll tell you what. Going for it on fourth costs us the game. But Zach Ertz's drop could have cost us the game. Zach Ertz played the Ricky Waters role yesterday, bro. You say what you want. Go look at that footage. Zach Ertz played the for who for what card right there. He played the for who for what card. I'm telling you that right. now. Now, he alligator armed that pass. He knew he was going to get lit up, and he did not want to get hit. Now, that brings up the question, was it or was it not? Because maybe he knows he does not have a contract extension. Maybe Zach Ertz is going to play under a different mindset because he doesn't have that guarantee. It real Listen, I, make no mistake about it. That does weigh on the mind of all players right of all players and, and and they're human and i get it but that's a problem cars has a clock in his head on plug only drew right you're right if the clock in his head is on plug but andre here's the problem man here's the problem if, if he if he doesn't get that he's never going to be the guy we want him to be he's never going to be the guy we want him to be you you have to be able to sense that you have and you know what there is also a way I, and, and I never played football, so I'm gonna be, I'm gonna ad lib here. Really, I, I I am going to say that you know I coach soccer, and in soccer we talk we talk about communication. We talk to our players about telling guys who can't see what is coming. Right, man on man on is a term that you hear in soccer all the time. When you're a defender and you have the ball from the defensive back position, you cannot tell if somebody is on your horse. You cannot tell if somebody's behind you. So it takes your teammates to be able to tell you that. Now, this football happens in a split second, so I understand it's a little different. I'm just saying that he he has no sense when we talk about over his blind side, and it's it's bad. It's really really bad. Uh.
Andre, as soon as Graham went out with that little, there was no pressure on that. That kid was calm in the pocket afterwards. And you know what? With every pass, Dwayne Haskins was getting calm. He was with every completed pass. And Ron Rivera, listen, I, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, man, it, it all has to do with the coach, right? I'm telling you that last year, when I watched the watch the Redskins team, or to watch the football, actually I could say Redskins because they were the Redskins last year. But when you watch the Redskins as opposed to the watch the football team this year, the culture on the sideline is completely different. When you watch it last year, when the Redskins would get, when the Redskins would get down, like if this was a Jay Gruden uh, coach team, you would have looked at the sideline. Jay Gruden would have looked defeated. Jay Gruden would have looked defeated. And when when your leader looks defeated, you pl- you you know you play on that. Right, that that is that trickles down to everybody on your sideline. Did Ron Rivera ever look defeated? Hell no. Him and Jack Del Rio were in each other's ear the entire time, you know, constructing a game plan in order to win this game. And when you do that as a coach, when you look over, especially the young guy Dwayne Haskins, I know this. I I coach you sports. I'm telling you right now. When when one of my 13 or 14 year olds look over at the coach and their head is down, what happens? They follow suit. They put their head down too. This is the same with professionals, right? This is the same with professionals. When Dwayne Haskins looks over and he would see John Gruden dip his head in disgust and throw down like, you know, talk about like a Tom Coughlin kind of play, the Eli Manning, right away he loses confidence. But when you look over at Ron Rivera and he's just calm and and he's just, listen, he's calm and cool. We're on the sideline. Calm down, kid. Do your job. You'll be okay. I'll tell you, the confidence is powerful, and people do not understand that. Uh, Super Bowl season where every decision, every ball went right. Everything, John. Everything went right, 100%. Every off-season acquisition was right. Every line call was right. Every cadence was right. Everything was right. And what are the odds that that will happen again? Slim to none. And in order for that to happen again, you need a head coach that understands how to put it all together. And I still don't think that that guy is Doug Peterson. I don't. I said it then, and I'll say it again. Doug Peterson will not win another Super Bowl. He would not win another Super Bowl as a head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Say whatever you want about it. You can combat me all, all day. It's okay. I can take it. I'm just telling you that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, Andre checks in. Alligator. Oh, yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, Andre, I, 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 I have visions of Ricky Waters all over again. Like I said earlier, I had visions of Ricky Waters all all over again for who for what that was a Zach Ertz play he did not want to get hit go back and look at the film please tell me I am wrong I dare anybody to say that me and Andre are wrong because we are right when it comes to that this was a second half team loss everybody yes everything 100% this is not on one guy this is not on one player this is on everyone as a staff and a team 100 percent you cannot relinquish that lead once they score that first touchdown you have to adjust and we did not adjust at all and let's also talk about the poor tackling for the philadelphia eagles we are usually a sure tackling team and our tackling yesterday was horrific right it was horrific it really was it was not good i'm telling you that right now it was not good and that was a problem as well can someone explain to me why clement wasn't in the playbook this week this kid trained hard the the clement factor to me andre is is so mysterious it really is and and i was high on Corey clement listen Corey clement was every bit to being close as the mvp of this 2017 super bowl he really was he was that good in that super bowl game and he was that good that season i mean everybody everybody talked about Corey clement and you know what, what a great undrafted signing that was and obviously he was a local kid they gave him the opportunity and he ran with it then injury set in he just wasn't right uh there was some there, there, there were there were some whispers about you know his commitment to the team and I think he righted that ship this year. I do. I think he righted that ship this year and he came in, he trained hard, he wanted to put that injury stuff behind him. And I, again, I mean Doug's handing it off to an undrafted rookie free agent that you just bring in two days ago. I mean, come on, man. This is what I'm talking about. I listen, I there's a reason why I didn't want to use Boston Scott in DFS because I did not feel that he was going to be valuable. I did not feel that Doug was going to utilize him the right way but 
I damn sure thought he was going to utilize the bigger back in Corey Clement, especially against a big defensive line, especially against a big defensive front. I don't understand what the hell Doug was doing with the running back position yesterday. I agree, Andre. It, it is mind-boggling to me. I think we've just seen a passing it toward. Uh, listen, I, I, I love that statement. I'm telling you right now, man, this is, this is what happens when you don't get things the right way. Right, Dallas Goddard was brought here for a reason. He was brought here because, number one, he was a really good value pick of where he was. Number two, he's a really good player. And number three, you already knew that you had a 27-year-old tight end locked up until he was 30 years old, getting ready to get his contract number two. So you bring in the heir apparent. This is how the business works. Now, am I saying that Dallas Goddard is going to be Zach Ertz? No. I will not say that. I think Zach Ertz does plenty of of, of ridiculous things that it, it, ridiculous in a good way that separates him from Dallas Goddard. But what I will say is, am I paying Zach Ertz thirty million dollars guaranteed? Am I paying Zach Ertz seventeen million dollars a year? No, I am not. And I know he's not happy about that. He turned down a contract three. Uh, two off seasons ago, he turned out an extension. But now when you see plays like that, you can see that the, the Eagles will be okay. Will they have – listen, is Dallas got it the, the, the crisp route runner like Zach Ertz? No. Zach Ertz is like a receiver on the field. But what I, what, what I will say about Goddard yesterday was he looked like a different player. He looked very nimble on his feet. He, he was cutting out – of the block a lot more crisper than we've seen in the past. He looked very, very polished yesterday. So that is a very good sign for Philadelphia Eagles and not a good sign for he- for the uh, Zach Ertz camp. I can tell you that. Uh, while pre- Brian checks in, while predicting the two years, Howie and Doug are fired. R- Wentz traded by new GM when they come in. Wow. That's that, that's not wild. That's bold, man. I Listen, in two years, Howie and Doug are fired. Uh, in two years, Doug will be fired. Okay, I'm going to tell you that right now. In two years, Doug will be fired. Uh, Howie Roseman is on the hot seat. But, again, you know, I, I did a, a show last night, uh, Upper Bowl Podcast, with some of the boys, my boy Trevor, doing big, doing really good things out there, grinding like, uh, like, like we all do. And, you know, he mentioned that, listen, Howie's really good friends with the man, which is Jeffrey Lurie. And, you know, Howie's never going to go anywhere. Well, that doesn't mean Howie doesn't get demoted again. Right, how he needs to stick to contracts and stop with Italian evaluation. How he's not a scout, he's not Italian evaluator, he's not a football player. He's a calculus guy. He's a money guy. He needs to stick to what he knows. They need to put him in a corner. Just let him do the contracts. Let him do the extensions and bring somebody in. Not named Joe Douglas, right? <laughs> because that 2017 draft was horrendous. Horrendous. Uh, Tyrus checks in. What's up, Tyrus? We should have gone. Listen. There's another great point. No depth. Why is Devonta Freeman not here? Why is Adrian Peterson not here? Had, did anybody watch the Detroit game yesterday? Listen, I watch every single game in a condensed version, to be honest with you, because I you know, I do shows every single day, and I want to know what the hell I'm talking about, and I don't want to sound like a blubbering idiot. So I do do that. So I'll tell you what, 95 yards for Adrian Peterson still looked explosive. Still looked like he had the speed, just like I was playing the videos, right, from, from you know, his days. Yes, Freeman. I Listen, I, you know, I love Devonta Freeman, Tars. I, I, I don't understand. I You know, Devonta Freeman to me does everything you need. He catches the ball in the flat. He gets between the tackles. He's a better version of Corey Clement, honestly. And if Corey Clement's not going to be used, if something wrong with Corey Clement, why are we not signing Devonta Freeman? It's a one-year deal. It doesn't hurt anybody. Come on. It only helps. And when you have a guy like Miles Sanders, if this is going to be a lingering thing, if, if the hamstring or the lower body injury, like they're going to call it, whether it be a groin, a hamstring is going to linger, this is something we need to look at. Boston Scott is a gadget guy. He is a gadget guy, right? It, 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 I mean, come on. This this is not who we you know we lean on to be your number one running back. And then I listen, uh, Tar, Tar Sexton again. Stop depending on his practice squad, guys. Exactly, they do not work, right? You do not work, especially again. Listen, 
you can't have a makeshift offensive line and a practice player running back on the in, in the same system. It doesn't work, okay? If you had a hellacious offensive line clicking on all cylinders and you wanted to throw a practice squad player in there for one week, okay, I get it. But you already knew you had the, the you, you already knew you had the issues on the offensive line, and you did nothing, not only nothing to help. And why, what, listen, Cordy Glenn, why is Cordy Glenn not here and signed? You say what you want, but he's better than Jack Driscoll. Are you kidding me? Are you, like, like, seriously, I, I don't know what the hell we're doing. We're trying to get our quarterback killed. And I'm not saying, I'm not taking all the, the blame off of Wentz, but we literally are trying to get our quarterback killed. I don't understand it. Uh, Andre, the Eagles can, can't do a double sack formation on a blind side because they, yes. Exactly, and, and and this is this is where the play calling comes in. So you're going to do a stack formation with the tight ends on the blind side, but you want people to be scared of JJ Ortega Whiteside. Does that make any sense? Zero. You don't have Tyreek Hill out there. You don't have DeAndre Hopkins out there. You have none of these guys out there. So why are you putting these? Listen, the play calls are ridiculous at times. Absolutely ridiculous when you don't have the formation. When, I mean, when you don't have the personnel to equal the formation. It's absolutely ridiculous. It happens all the time. Why do we see things that they don't? Taurus, I'm telling you right now, my man, I don't know. You know, I you know I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I do a lot of national shows. Um, I do shows that are based out of all different cities and states, and I say the same thing all the time. I get told the same thing all the time. We are the most educated fan base in America. We are. We watch game film. Listen, I am telling you right now, the majority of us go in and watch things that coaches watch on Mondays. We do. We see these things. We understand because we are that invested into our fan base. We are that invested into our franchise in Philadelphia. And we do know these things. And the funny thing is, if number one, if they don't know, then they shouldn't be where they're at. Number two, I think it's just ignorance. That's what I think. I think it's just ignorance. I think it's egotistical in a sense that they're saying they're going to make it work. That's what they're saying. We're going to, our system, this, this is the one thing. You, you know, our system works. You'll hear that a lot. If our system works, it doesn't matter. You see this in America all over, especially when we talk about in the business sector. How many businesses, especially corporations, always feel like if they're, listen, we can get anybody to do this job as long as our procedures are in place, as long as we have everything lined up the right way, anybody can do it. Wrong. Okay, I say that all the time. Wrong. You can't run a business like that. You can't run a team like this. It's not working. You do not have the personnel to you know the to compensate for the lack of talent, right? And what I mean by personnel is veteran personnel, star-studded personnel. Okay, this is why just drafting a receiver in Jalen Rager was not enough. Right? Why are we relying on guys? Listen, if I hear the word John Hightower again, I, I, I'm going to scream. If we're, re listen, I'm telling you right now, if we are relying on practice squad players and seventh round draft picks and undrafted rookies to produce, we might as well just hang up the season right now. We, we th that's not our problem, man. That's not, they, they are, they, they're practice squad guys for a reason. Okay. Stop with this. I, I'm so tired of hearing about the practice squad players and the undrafted players that need to produce that's wrong i'm sorry we cannot let that happen what we let the bucks go get for net listen i'll tell you what i i think for net want to go to tampa i do i think for net want to go to tampa anyway but it was sad to me that there wasn't even a whisper of the eagles being interested that I, I'll tell you that right now. I, I, I'm I with you there. That was sad to me. They weren't even interested at all. And as much as I, I love Miles Sanders, I think Miles Sanders has every opportunity to be a top five running back in this league as long as he can stay healthy. When you have a line like you have right now, you definitely need that number two guy. You need that guy in there to be able to push every now and then. And for us not to have it, it's it's concerning, man. The 49ers made the Super Bowl with a strong tight end core. It can happen. Ignorance is killing us. We're trying to throw the ball down. Uh, listen, I, you know, and and forcing it, forcing the ball downfield when it's not there. I mean that that and the 49ers made the Super Bowl. Why also they had a strong running game, 
right? They they understood that if we limit the amount of attempts that Jimmy G throws the ball, we can win the whole damn thing. That's a Kyle Shanahan run offense. Kyle Shanahan is a offensive mastermind. Make no mistake about it. For all the people out there that say he was riding the coattails of his dad, guess what? You were damn wrong. Okay, you were wrong. I'd like those people to stand up right now. Kyle Shanahan knows what the hell he's doing out there. He does. He he's running a tight ship. He and, and, and he has the personnel to run his system, which is different than what we have. We we listen, we went out and got all speed guys. That's great. I get it. Guys are fast. I understand. But where's our underneath guys at? You know, I, I'm sorry. Like it it just we could have speed all day, but at the you know, at, you know, when you talk about you know, a, a 60 minute football or 60 minute football game. But when, when you talk about, uh, you know, every single quarter of every single game and you talk about that offensive scripted game plan, you, you need more than just speed. And that, that's a problem to me. And, and uh, you know, strong, strong tight end core. We have that right. Andre, we have two of the best tight ends in football. Listen, I, yeah, I'm not saying Dallas Goddard is better than George Kittle, but I'll tell you what, I think Dallas Goddard's top 10. And I think Zach Ertz is top five. So, you know, if you have those two guys right there, you need to be able to make it work. That's, uh, listen, that's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And it can't always go into players. We're dealing, listen, in Philly people, we're dealing with this right now in 76ers land, right? You, you have two generational talents, Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. If you're a coach, you need to figure out a way to make it work. And Brett Brown didn't make it work. Brett Brown's not here. Doug Pearson needs to find a way. To make this thing work. Listen, he was so concerned about making the 49ers system when it comes to coaches by not having an offensive play caller. And he was going to have, you know, four or five guys that were just going to sit around and talk things out. And uh, stop, dog. It's not working, dog. It's not working. Okay. It's not working. And one thing is weird to me. And th this was brought up. And I, I want to ask your guys' opinion of this. This was brought up to me yesterday that people feel like Doug is scared of Carson. Um, you know, I, I, you know, and what they meant by that is they proved a good point. They said, you know, no matter who would come in the game, whether it be Nate Sudfeld or or Nick Foles, it seemed like the offense just played out smoother. Now, yeah, obviously Carson Wentz is the better quarterback. We all know that. But does the game plan change a little bit? Does, is is he, you know, is is there some kind of rift going on between Carson and Doug in the sense that Doug is afraid to check Carson? Not sure, man. But something something's not right. Something's going on. Our super, well, yes, we had Legarrette Blunt and, and one of my podcast uh, partners in, in in Coach Dave loved Legarrette Blunt and he was a huge Legarrette Blunt guy. He want Legarrette Blunt back here. He you know he consistently said Legarrette Blunt needs to be here. That was last year. So we definitely need the power back. It definitely worked, man. It definitely worked. It still works. Taurus, you know you look at even even Oakland when you have Josh Jacobs, who's, who's obviously the guy. They still have a formidable backup, right? They saw Jalen Richard that can come in, and he's a power back and a pass catcher. We see this all around the NFL. So why, when you have a finesse guy, right, in Miles Sanders, why you don't have a big guy backing him up is beyond me. Uh, it, it just is. It's ridiculous. It's it's short sighted in my opinion. It really is. When you're trying to get double team, Clement needs to be in the game for half back. Stop with the right. Listen, Corey Clement. If you're not listen, if you're not going to sign Devonta Freeman, if you're not going to sign Adrian Peterson, okay, and what I mean by that, we're talking about pr prior week one, then Corey Clement needs to be in the game plan a lot more, right? He needs to be in the game plan a lot more. He needs to be the power guy. He listen, you know, w w with the screen game, think about all the catches he had out in the flat in 2017. That touchdown catch in the Super Bowl was absolutely ridiculous. That was Corey Clement. Corey Clement was a beast out in the flat. Do we not forget about that? But we fall in love with these little guys of Boston Scott. He is not Darren Sproles, dog. Boston Scott is not Darren Sproles. Boston Scott is a guy who's going to come in and get about five touches a game, and he's a gadget guy. Leave him to be the gadget guy. Stop forcing him down our throat. He is not a 20 carry back. If you are going to disperse touches, Corey Clement needs to be at the top of that chart. Just what he needs to happen. I don't know if, you know, he supposedly is healthy. He supposedly trained hard. He was ready for this opportunity. Why are we limiting him? I don't understand that. Especially here's the other thing, Andre, when your tight ends are getting double teamed, 
And the defensive line with with Allen, <laughs> which, listen, that defensive line in Washington was absolutely killing us, was killing us. So why wouldn't you have the better pass protector in there as well? That's another thing I don't understand. So not only do you drop the ball, run, you know, drop the ball running the ball, no pun intended, but you drop the ball by not having your power back in there, the guy who picks up the blitz and it can pass protect you when your quarterback's getting killed. And another reason, right? Another reason. This is why yesterday Doug came up so small. It starts with Doug, in my opinion. Okay? It starts with Doug. It goes to Howie, and then it goes to Carson. Carson is not, you know, he's not invisible right now. He's not. He, You know, he, he has to take accountability. I know he did, but he, it needs to be better. Listen, eventually, here's the problem. Eventually, if, if Carson Wentz is standing at the podium or standing in front of the Zoom screen week in and week out and saying, I have to get better, I have to get better, we're going to get annoyed. We are. I love you, Carson, but just just do it, please. Stop, stop talking about it and be about it. That's all I need you to do. Stop talking about it and be about it. We say that a lot all the time. We see a lot of people, especially what's going on. Get a little deal, especially what's going on in America today. Everybody always has something to say, but they never they never act on what they want to do, right? So just don't talk about it. Be about it. That's what we need Carson to do. On the football field, he really needs to do it. Uh, it pisses me off when I see Donald Rand completely dominating. Completely dominating. Now, I will say this, Andre. Malik Jackson had a hell of a game yesterday. And I, I, I'll i tell you what. I'm very excited at the prospects when we get Hargrove back and we have Malik Jackson and Fletcher Cox. I, I think they played very well. I do. I, I think they played very well. Where, where we got hit hard, man, is we couldn't get any pressure from the ends. You know, we, we didn't get any pressure on Dwayne Haskins on the ends. And, you know, it, they were able to throw the ball downfield. And it, it killed us, man. It, it did. But when you watch a guy like Aaron Donald just completely dominate that offensive line at Dallas last night, and then you see what we're doing. It's so tough, man. It is so tough. It is. It, it, it's something that it, it annoys the hell out of you because you know what we have. You know what we can have. You're, you're, you know, Listen, I'm watching guys throw a football yesterday that Carson Wentz is better than. I'm watching guys that Carson Wentz is better than, and Carson can't produce. How does, and I get it, we don't have Calvin Ridley, and we don't have Julio Jones, but Matt Ryan threw for 450 yards yesterday. 450 yards, almost 500 yards of offense through the air, okay? Almost 500 yards of offense through the air, and look what we did to the Washington football team. So my hat's off to Washington. They played a hell of a game. They did. Uh, we deserved to win. They deserved to win that game, but we deserved to be in that game in the second half, and, and it's something that we weren't. So we go to week two. Listen, we go to week two, and we see what this week brings. We see what the injury. Uh, I'm not ready to jump ship, guys. I'm not. Not ready to jump ship. I, I want to see Lane healthy. I want to see Miles healthy. I want to see what this offense looks like with these guys healthy. I really do. I you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jump off right now. I'm not gonna do it. Um, I agree. Jackson did did have he did when when when, when Cox draws a double team. Jackson's perfect. Listen, the, Washington made that adjustment in the second half, and then what happened? You know, this is this is another one, Andre. It's going to get me fired up. So, what happened when he when when they made the adjustment? Nobody on this team stepped up. Nobody, nobody from a defensive end position stepped up. Zero. Derek Barnett not available for this game. He was out. Where was the whole Josh Sweat? Oh, Josh Sweat having a tremendous camp. You know, an abbreviated camp, I should say. Looks great in the bubble. Looks great in practice. Oh, where was Josh Sweat yesterday? Where was he at? Where where was Sharif Miller? Oh, I forgot. We caught him because he couldn't play. Another waste of draft pick, right? Another waste of draft pick. And, and what are we going to watch tonight? Watch the Davion Clowney? The Davion Clowney is probably going to get at least one sack tonight in Tennessee. And we we didn't want Jadavion Clowney, right? Why we want why we want Clowney on this team? Why we want somebody who's going to get get to the quarterback consistently, especially when they double team guys like Fletcher Cox and Malik Jackson. Single cut. I mean, come on. I mean, you you have a double team. You you, you know, you're you're double teaming our best players, and we still cannot get pressure from the edge. That that is that is mind boggling to me. Mind boggling. It really is. It, it it's it's ridiculous. Yep. A run, yeah. Exactly. 
it was a, clearly a drop. And, and listen, I like Brandon Graham, and Grant, Brandon Graham played very well up until he got injured. But, again, Brandon Graham is only going to give you so much for so long, man. Guy's 32, 33 years old. His motor's only going to run for so long. But, you know, you have nobody else on the other side. Vinny Carey, don't give me Vinny Carey. Vinny Carey, that, that was – listen, I, that's a depth signing. I don't expect anything out of Vinny Carey. Now he's hurt. So we, it looks like a pretty bad hamstring injury. So he might be lost for four or five, six weeks, right? Six weeks. But you need consistent pressure from the edge. You let Dwayne Haskins sit back there and serve at the field, almost like you did with Chase Keenum when he was a quarterback in Washington. You let him sit back and serve at the field. You can't do that. You need to get constant pressure. And when you have a guy like Jim Schwartz who doesn't really bring the blitz, you have to get it from your front four. That's where your pressure has to be generated from. So if you're going to double-team Fletcher Cox or you're going to double-team Fletcher uh, you know, or uh, Malik Jackson, you're going to use the, court, the running back up the chip block. If you're going to keep a tight end to chip somebody on the edge, like a Brandon Graham, the other guy on the right-hand side needs to take control. And we don't have that guy. We don't have that guy. That This is why I was a huge advocate for signing to Davion Clowney. And I think it's another bad miss by management. Say what you want. I don't want to hear about the money. It's the fellows. It's not my money. I don't care. Make it work. Figure out a way to make it work. It was a one year deal. That's it. Figure out a way to make it work. Tennessee figured out a a way to make it work. So now they have two guys in Vic Beasley and Jadavion Clowney. Two guys, two studs. And I know Vic's probably not going to play this week, but still, two studs. We need that. When you looked at the Kansas City Chiefs, they had two guys, Chris Jones and Frank Clark. Listen, yes, we have Fletcher Cox and Malik Jackson who play inside, but we don't have that Frank Clark on the outside, right? We don't have that Joey Bosa on the outside. We don't have that guy. That's why I thought that Jadavion Clowney would have been the perfect fit for this team. I really did. I, you know, I think it's another miss by management. It is, but I, I, I'm entirely frustrated watching that game. Really? Uh, what's up, Trevor? How you doing, buddy? Coming in, uh, coming in late, coming in late, Trevor. Always up, up late last night. Probably editing pods, man. My man, how you doing, buddy? Good morning. Good Monday. Well, I don't know if it's a good Monday morning, but I'm ready for this doubleheader tonight, man. I'm ready. I, you know, I, 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 I want to look past this. I, I don't want to hear people jumping off the bridge right now. I, I, I want to let this, you know, survey itself out this week. I, I want to see what comes about. I want to see what happens and, and, and go from there. I do. I, I want to take a cool headed approach to this. I don't want to get, I, I don't want to get over ahead of myself because I will go crazy, but I, I, I want to see what week two brings. I do. You know, I, I do. Cause look what happened at Dallas last night. Dallas didn't look that great either. Okay. So it, it happens. It does. It's just, unfortunately for us, it feels like it happens all the time. Right. That's what and that's the sad part. It feels like this is a recurring event, like a broken record that continues, continues to work. Right. It, it continues to run its course because I feel like we, we can watch this and visit this story each year, each season, year in and year out. And it, it's very unfortunate, man. We, we, we deserve better. We definitely deserve better. But anyway, man, thanks for everybody checking in. Uh, well, 45, I have another show to do in three minutes, so I have to get all. If, if you'd like to join in our show at, at the Sports Guy Mike Show, follow me on Twitter or follow me on Facebook. Uh, I will be sharing a link. Join in, man. We'll continue the conversation. We'll get, we're going to continue the conversation. We're going to talk Eagles on that show. If you guys want to talk national, we're going to talk national as well. We're going to cover all the games, talk NBA as well, talk NFL fantasy. We're going to talk everything on the other side in three minutes. So get over to at Sports Guy Mike Show. It's at Sports Guy Mike. If you follow at Sports Guy Mike on Twitter, you click on it on Facebook, you will see the live show. Uh, the three of us or the two of us will be breaking it down for the next hour. So uh, I welcome everybody in for the next hour. Join us uh, again. Listen, listen to Daily Ticket. I'll be live tomorrow. Uh, do a little fancy work today. Uh, probably do a little fancy show tonight. So if anybody's anybody's interested, probably do a little fancy firebox session tonight. Uh, recap the week, uh, and then Heat Ratio Live goes uh, tomorrow night. We are flipping our night from Monday to Tuesday because listen. I can't compete with the NFL, man. Who can compete with the NFL? But again, thanks a lot, Andre. Yes, on week two, it's okay to be frustrated. It's therapeutic. Talk it out. Yes, it's okay to be frustrated, but take it in stride. And like Aaron Rodgers said, wow, Aaron Rodgers had a hell of a day yesterday. Just 
relax. So again, Tony Jigsaw Cotillo, Heat Ratio Sports. Check us out. Range reviews. Like the page. I appreciate it. Everybody stay safe. Stay healthy. Join us. 1030 Sports Guy Mike Show or catch tonight, Fancy Firebox or tomorrow here for Jigsaw Shots. Everybody have a fantastic month.